On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the U.S. Sixth Fleet's been ordered to the Eastern Med. I am your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So this channel is all about global shipping and the impact that shipping has with you. However, the deployment of the Sixth Fleet, this is the U.S. Navy fleet stationed in the Mediterranean to the Eastern Mediterranean in response to the conflict that has broken out between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip does have a potential impact on global shipping. I'm going to talk about the Navy deployments, but also talk about the commercial deployments and what that means. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So here's the story by John Conrad over at G-Captain. U.S. Navy dispatches its latest cutting-edge aircraft carrier, to Israel. This is the USS Gerald R. Ford, the newest carrier in the fleet. It was commissioned back in 2017, but because of a lot of teething problems, everything from the electronic, uh, excuse me, the electric catapult system to the electric arresting gear uh, to the elevators that are on board, this has really delayed the operational use of this aircraft carrier. And it's only now six years in on its first operational deployment. Uh, that means over a, a tenth of the ship's service life has already been consumed. But let's take a look at what the Secretary of Defense said regarding this. So here is Secretary Lloyd Austin's statement on it. Basically, this is the increasing the defense posture in the Eastern Mediterranean because of the conflict between Hamas and Israel. Uh, specifically, I've directed the movement of the Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group to the Eastern Mediterranean. This includes the Ford, the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser Normandy. So uh, Ticonderoga-class cruisers are designed to do the air defense for air groups. Back in the day when built, we had 27 of them. That went down to 22. And now there's just a handful left with them being decommissioned at an alarming rate. There is about enough for one with each carrier strike group. And on board is a Navy captain who directs the anti-air warfare for the carrier strike group. And then there are four Arleigh Burke class destroyers, the Thomas Hudner, the Ramage, the Kearney, and the Roosevelt. Uh, Ramage and Kearney are Flight 1 destroyers. These are very early models of the uh, Arleigh Burke class destroyers. They don't have a flight deck on board. Uh, and then the Roosevelt and Thomas Hudner are Flight 2A destroyers. There is a brand new version of the Arleigh Burks coming out, what are called Flight 3s. Uh, just commissioned, commissioned the very first one of them this past week. They are going to be the replacement for the Ticonderoga class cruisers. They are designed to do the air defense for the groups. They also mention here that they're deploying U.S. Air Force units, F-35s, F-15s, F-16s, and A-10s. All of these are meant to increase the defensive posture for the Department of Defense. This is a story back in May over at USNI News about the deployment of the Gerald R. Ford battle group heading over under Captain Rick Burgess. He's the CO of the Ford. Uh, this marks a couple of key things here, not the least of which is that the Ford will continue the consistent carrier presence in the Mediterranean Sea, which began in December of 2021, ahead of the Russian invasion of Ukraine early in 2022. We have not seen really the constant deployment of aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean for a long time. Where they were going was to the Fifth Fleet, out to the Middle East. But now with what happened in Ukraine, what's been going on consistently here, we see a, a presence here. So Carrier Strike Group 12, which is made up of the Ford and its onboard Carrier Air Wing, Carrier Air Wing 8, along with Destroyer Squadron 2, are all there. And you'll see that the, the, uh, the composition of that group was Ramage McFall and Thomas Hudner going over with Normandy. So a fairly typical deployment you see there with a cruiser and three destroyers. On board the... Uh, Ford right now is Air Group 8, so you have four squadrons of FA-18s. These are about 12 planes each. So notice they're lacking uh, uh, F-35s. This Ford does not have F-35s on board. So these are the later generation fighters. If you saw the latest Top Gun, this is what Tom Cruise and them were flying. Those are FA-18s. You have some electronic aircraft. Uh, you'll have a handful of Growlers on board. These are EA-18Gs. You'll have some radar surveillance aircraft. Those are the E-2D. These, those are the Hawkeyes. You'll have a type of aircraft called the COD. 
uh, for carrier onboard delivery. Those are C2s. And then helicopters on board, both MH60s and MH60 Romeos and Sierras. These are the classic uh, uh, Seahawks going on board. And this entire battle group is coming out of both Norfolk and Mayport, Florida. So that's where the bulk of where we're seeing those units from. This is the latest from USNI News on deployments of the U.S. Navy. We are far below the threshold we want the U.S. Navy to be. The U.S. Navy keeps talking about 355 ships. I'm going to do a video on this very uh, shortly talking about this. We are only at 290 ships in the battle force. And notice here that the greatest concentration of our assets overseas is not in the Mediterranean, but it's over in, in the Western Pacific, keeping an eye on China. 59 ships in the 7th Fleet, 21 of them are in the 6th Fleet. The other elements you have here are auxiliary vessels that back up the U.S. Navy. These are ships of the Military Sealift Command. So one out of five ships of those 290 are accrued and, and uh, operated by civilian merchant mariners of the U.S. Military Sealift Command. That's right, one out of five ships in the U.S. Navy have civilian crews on board. And these aren't contractors per se. They are government employees who operate gray hull vessels for the U.S. Navy. You can differentiate, differentiate them by their hull tags, USNS, U.S. Naval Ships. And you'll see right here, five USNS ships are in the Mediterranean right now, squawking their AIS. The Medgar Evers, which is a dry cargo ammunition ship, is heading to the Eastern Mediterranean, probably tagging along with the uh, battle group uh, heading there. You'll see the USNS Laramie, which is an oiler coming down the west side of Italy. And then up here in Croatia, the Leroy Grumman is right now completing a shipyard period. And then you have two fast uh, transport vessels, the Yuma and the Trenton that are in the area. So again, a lot of vessels you see, and what we don't see, and what you'll never hear the US Navy talk about, is deployment of submarines. What submarines are in and around this area? Uh, you can expect a couple of fast attack submarines of the Virginia or Los Angeles class, probably a fast, uh, a, a, a missile cruiser, uh, missile, excuse me, a uh, submarine too, of the Florida class. These are modified Ohio class ballistic missile submarines outfitted with over 150 Tomahawk missiles. Uh, these are absolute killers when it comes to them. We've seen a lot of presence of ballistic missiles and guided missile uh, submarines recently throughout the area. So you can expect to see these vessels in and around that area. The other vessels you have is a squadron that's permanently based over in Rota, Spain. This is a story from June of last year, Mallory Shelbourne, Biden administration basing two more destroyers in Rota, Spain. So the, this presence here has been an ongoing one. Initially, there were two destroyers in Rota, then four. Now we are up to six destroyers. Part of this is for ballistic missile defense. So many of these destroyers, especially the earlier Flight 1 destroyers, have been modified to provide this uh, uh, ballistic missile de defense. They're part of what's called the Forward Deployed Naval Force Europe, FDNF-E. You've got to have an acronym, and that is a horrible acronym by the U.S. Navy. They love doing it. But six destroyers that are based there, some of them will not be able to join the Eastern Fleet because some of them will need to be on patrol providing that ballistic missile screen for Eastern Europe against possible Russia. I, I find it very ironic, six destroyers based in Europe. One of my favorite images is this one. This is the return of the Mayflower. This is the arrival of Destroyer Division 8 in May of 1917, coming into Queenstown, Ireland. Today, it's Cove. Not Cove, I made that mistake the other day. Cove, Ireland. Uh, I am doing a research right now. The book I am writing is on uh, U.S. Navy transportation of the American Expeditionary Force to Europe in World War One, And so I'm talking about this a lot. This is actually my screensaver. So I, I love this image. To me, it, it's, it's the epitome of this deployment in World War One, And it's no irony that now six Arleigh Burke class destroyers are based in Rota, providing that forward defense. Let's talk about the commercial side. How does this impact commercial shipping? So this story right here by G Captain came out. This is a Bloomberg story. As Israel Hamas war rages, oil traders focus on Iran. So there's gonna be a lot of questions going on here regarding the responsibility of Hamas to launch these attacks, who's backing them. And Israel has been accusing 
Iran of supporting Hamas for a long time. Right now, there's an ongoing peace negotiation between Israel, the United States, and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia and Iran have been in a Cold War uh, for decades now. You see that fighting down in Yemen and throughout the Middle East. And definitely here, if Israel suspects Iran is supporting and providing these weapons and assistance to Hamas, you can expect Israel to potentially target Iranian oil tankers and the oil Iranian oil trade. Understand, Iran has been targeting Israeli ships. A lot of those attacks we've seen coming in and out of the Persian Gulf have been targeted against Israeli-owned vessels. I don't think it's a coincidence that you have a Navy, U.S. Navy amphibious ready group that deployed to the Persian Gulf and said that they would assist in the escorting of vessels in and out of the Persian Gulf. Here, what we're seeing is this risk of a larger conflict. The risk of a, lo- a wider conflict has emerged just as global crude supplies have been depleted by months of sharp production cutbacks by Saudi Arabia and Russia. Last month, their supply constraints briefly pushed Brent futures, this is uh, the major crude oil, up to over $100 a barrel. This onslaught comes almost exactly 50 years after the Arab oil embargo when Saudi Arabia and other OPEC producers choked off flows to the West in the wake of the 1973 Yom Kippur War, which also involved Israel. If you are not old enough to remember this, I am, unfortunately. This is a period of time when we were getting a lot of oil from the Middle East. That caused a shutdown of oil coming into the United States. You had these massive lines at gas stations because 1970s cars were not the most fuel efficient. This is the time where, depending on what was the last letter or number of your license plate, whether you can go to a gas station on odd and even days, uh, it created a lot of disruption. Also understand the Sixth Fleet was deployed in support of this. They went to the Eastern Mediterranean because the U.S. was flying in a lot of the ammunition and equipment for the Israelis. And so they were providing air cover for a a, a corridor that had U.S. Air Force aircraft landing in Israel, depositing weapons just as the Israelis were using it. So this has the potential. President Biden came out and staunchly, staunchly advocated that we will support Israel. So the movement of the Sixth Fleet here has that. And should this expand to target Iranian commercial shipping out on the high seas, that's going to have an impact on global fuel prices, especially with OPEC and Russia curtailing the amount of oil that is out there and available on the market. Last thing I'll show you is the situation off the coast of Israel right now and the Gaza Strip. So here's Egypt. This is the Gaza Strip, very heavily, densely populated area that holds Palestinians. These are people living in Israel of, of, of Muslim heritage and religion. But the thing to note is Israel has two ports. Up here in the north is Tel Aviv, uh, excuse me, Haifa, uh, coming in by Tel Aviv. This is the area where you have a lot of uh, vessels coming in, kind of the major port into the area. And down here, much closer to uh, Gaza, you have the port of Ascot. And again, you can see the amount of vessels. Here is the Gaza Strip right down here, very close by. And not close at all, you have this major port right here. Uh, It's not huge vessels that come in here. This is by no means a massive port. Here's the border right here with the Gaza Strip. Here's the anchorage off the coast. Here are the vessels waiting to get in. Uh, These are small to medium-sized container ships, bulk carriers, car carriers, cement carriers. But this is just a few miles from the Gaza Strip to the port. And this puts that port within missile range of, of, of being able to be hit. And just as we've seen in Russia, Ukraine, with the targeting of commercial vessels and how commercial vessels have gotten themselves caught in the crossfire, the very same thing could be happening here to vessels that are off these two main Israeli ports. Uh, this is the main way that Israel gets goods into the country. There's not a lot of alternative routes in there. Uh, Eliot, uh, a lot in the southern part of Israel is there, but really it's the Mediterranean ports that have it. And again, notice where this is located in the Eastern Med. Uh, you're not far from the Suez Canal, out into the Red Sea. Uh, this is a major shipping area. So what happens in Eastern Mediterranean tends not to stay always 
in the Eastern Mediterranean that has the potential to spill over. So we're going to be watching this really closely for the global shipping impact. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do it? You can give a thumbs up down below, or you can hit that super thanks button, or head on over to Patreon where you can become a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until our next video, this is Sal, signing off.